Well, so this is part two of the uh, comparison between uh, Clinton and Obama stances or, or possible stances on um, foreign policy issues. So I hope I uh, haven't lost your attention span yet. Um, that's basically why I'm doing it for people who tr do try to pay attention. If it doesn't interest you, then um, I think you should tune out because I have the feeling this is going to turn into a multi-part video. and. Tonight I'm going to get down to some issues which are very specific in terms of foreign policy between uh, these two candidates or possible candidates. So we're talking about the stances, uh, uh, foreign policy issues and stances between the differences between Clinton and Obama, the possible differences and similarities. So two specific issues uh, hopefully tonight. Uh, one is uh, Iraq, so that concerns the past and the present, and another one is Iran. And again, this is from an essay by Stephen Zunes. Uh, please look at my previous uh, video uh, to see where this information comes from. So uh, the issue of uh, Iraq. Clinton was an outspoken supporter of President George Bush's request for Senate authorization to invade Iraq at the time and circumstances of his own choosing, and was among the minority of Congressional Democrats to vote in favor of such an authorization. Clinton falsely claimed despite the lack of any credible evidence that Iraq had a dangerous arsenal of chemical and biological weapons, a nuclear weapons program, and sophisticated offensive delivery systems. Clinton went as far as saying that Iraq was actively supporting Al-Qaeda. After the U.S. invaded and occupied Iraq, and the Bush administration finally acknowledged the absence of Iraqi WMDs and ties to Al-Qaeda, Clinton continued to defend her support for the American conquest for that oil-rich country. Soon um, after he left the Senate, for instance, and this is about Senator uh, Edwards. Um, and Senator Edwards, for instance, reversed his stance on, uh, on his votes and formally apologized for them, while um, Mrs. Clinton uh, has refused to apologize for her votes. Obama, by contrast, opposed the war even uh, taking part in anti-war demonstrations in Chicago four months prior to the invasion and argued that Iraq was not uh, an imminent threat to the United States nor its neighbors. Now that of course was before um, Obama wa became a senator because um, he didn't become a senator until, until 2005, and uh, things tend to change once uh, you um, occupy a position of power. And so his position also changed during that time. Once he became a senator in 2005, Obama joined Clinton in supporting unconditional funding for the war though eventually he, became, he began calling for a timetable for withdrawal of American troops, a position opposed by Clinton until last year. Both Obama and Clinton voted for the first time against Bush's war funding proposals this past May, so this was in 2007, and have continued to vote against unconditional funding. The candidates' current positions uh, on Iraq are remarkably similar and promising uh, to begin withdrawing some troops immediately upon coming to office 
but none promising to have all troops out by the end of their first term, which would be in 2013. Based on the respective plans for Iraq they have put forward, however, Obama is more likely to get more troops out sooner than would Clinton, who argues for a U.S. military as well as political mission in Iraq for an indefinite future for such purposes. She also calls for a continuing mission against al-Qaeda in Iraq, which of course has now been the perfect recruiting ground over there, I might say along with the obligation to protect our civilian employees at our embassy. Since most uh, estimates of the numbers of troops needed to carry out these tasks range between 40,000 and 75,000 troops, the best that can be hoped for under a Hillary Clinton presidency is that we would withdraw only about one-half to two-thirds of American combat forces within a couple of years of her assuming office. Obama said that U.S. troops may need to maintain a reduced but active presence, which is, you know, a pretty vague statement, to protect logistical supply points and American enclaves like the Green Zone, as well as act as rapid reaction forces to respond to emergencies and go after terrorists, but has pledged to withdraw combat troops within 16 months. Obama recognizes the need to make clear that we seek no permanent basis in Iraq and has increasingly, increasingly emphasized that most U.S. troops that remain in the area should be over the horizon in other words, in stationed in other countries, such as Kuwait rather than in Iraq itself. He has called for diplomatic and humanitarian initiatives to address some of the underlying issues driving the ongoing conflict and has promised to launch a comprehensive regional and international diplomatic initiative to help broker an end of the civil war in Iraq, prevent its spread and limit the suffering of the Iraqi people. Now, of course, these are, as we all know, these are all promises, public speeches, and so on. Nobody really knows what uh, they'll end up doing once uh, uh, they become president, or if they don't become president, well, they won't, somebody else will be making the decisions. So the issue of uh, Iran looms large. It's not going to go away. And I can see <laughs> by looking at my clock here that this video is again, you know, something like six or seven minutes long. So Iran is important. So uh, uh, there will be a video dedicated to that on, on their positions. And also, you know, to the ongoing problem of uh, the so-called uh, war on terror and uh, the stance on um, Israel and the Palestinians uh, by both of these uh, candidates. So, um, sorry this is taking so long, but uh, if it interests you, um, I hope you keep watching. Thanks a lot. Bye.